Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers and every app needs credentials to access a database, right? Because almost every app has some type of database interactivity. You need credentials and that comes with a certain set of responsibilities. You've got to get the credentials into your app. You've got to keep them secure. You got to be able to rotate those credentials and you have different credentials for all your different environments like dev and staging and production. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the common ways of solving this problem. And I'm also going to show you how I chose to solve it in the new app that I'm building, leapproof.com. So if we take a look at this application here in our main function, we're declaring some different command line arguments one of which is db-dsn, so we can pass in our database credentials on the CLI or the command line whenever we start our application. The great thing about this is it works regardless of what environment you're on. You just pass in the right credentials for that environment. The downside of this approach is it's really easy for someone to see what those credentials are, either by looking at the command line history, if they have access to that system, or if they have access to the system, they can use the proc file system to be able to look and see what arguments a particular command was launched with. Now, another way you can deal with this is through the use of environment variables. So you set the environment variable on the system that's running the application, and then you can just grab that from the operating system when your application runs. In this approach, it's common to use your CI CD server to set the value of those variables whenever the process is deployed. Now that does require that your CI CD server is secure and it has a way to safely store sensitive values and that you're managing access to the CI CD server to ensure that only those who need access can read and write those values. One other potential pitfall with this approach is that since these are variables at the operating system level, anything that causes a stack dump and returns that stack to a potentially malicious user may return those credentials in the stack as well. Now, good error handling can mitigate that concern, as well as ensuring that your databases are protected behind a firewall and ensuring that they are not accessible from the Internet. The next one that we'll talk about is the use of ENV files or credential files. It's a file that's presented to your app at runtime and contains the secrets that it needs to operate. I see this one a lot, and to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of it. The issues I have with it are managing this out of band file. You have to make sure that it never gets shared or committed to your repository. And you typically have multiple files, one for each environment. And you need to make sure that your app launches with the right one. Not to mention that now instead of having one sensitive file to control, you have one sensitive file per each stage of your environment that you got to manage. There's also a small but a very real issue that because this file exists on your server, anyone who's able to compromise the file system can potentially access the credentials file as well. The final way I'm going to show you is my favorite, and it happens to be the one that I implemented in this new app that I'm building, Leapproof. So if we take a look down here in our main function, we do this little function call to open our DB. So if we take a look at that, We've got a switch statement in here. And first of all, let me show you, there's a default here that just specifies if nothing else in this switch statement matches, use the one from config. And this one from config is the one that I showed you in the first part of the video that can be set through the CLI arguments. So that's your default. But in the case where we're running our staging environment, that's not going to apply. It's actually going to run this switch statement here where it does this little get secret thing. So if we scroll up and take a look at get secrets or get secret, what it does is it looks for a specific secret out in AWS secrets manager, and it's going to grab the credentials in that value or grab the value of those credentials and return them. When it returns them, we've got this DB creds type here. Let's take a look at that. This shows the username, password, engine, host, port, DB instance identifier. 
So it's going to unmarshal that JSON response we got from AWS Secrets Manager and create our creds object here. And then it's going to use that to build our database connection string. And then it's going to open our database, verify connectivity, and we're up and running. As far as security goes, I use an IAM policy that allows any device with this policy to read those credentials. And then this, this policy is restricted and only applied to the API services running in my application. And then of course, administrators in my AWS account have access so that they can rotate those credentials, which is pretty easy to do in this pattern because what we'll do is create a new database user and a new database password grant it permission to that database in our RDS instance, and then update the value of our secret over in Secrets Manager and restart our app and we're up and running. Doing it that way ensures that there's never any time or any gap whenever our containers or our application can't talk to the database because we have the existing credentials, we create a new set, tell the application to use those new credentials, and then we'll go back and delete the old set of credentials. And it's a seamless interruption-free way to rotate your credentials. Now, all four of those methods are commonly used across the industry, and each has its own pros and cons, but the cons for each of them can be mitigated through proper setup of your security and access policies. So choose whichever one works best for you. Just make sure that you consider the security implications of it and you're gonna be fine. If you did end up implementing some of this, be sure and drop a note in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you did or shoot it out on Twitter and make sure that you tag me in your tweet. If you wanna understand like the bigger DevOps picture and how this ties into all of that, check out the DevOps roadmap. And it's a choose your own adventure style guide where it teaches you how all the different parts of DevOps link together based on the information that you already know. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you'll see all the videos that I'm releasing as I'm building leapproof.com and publishing it here. You'll also find out how to get early access to leapproof whenever I launch it. And that will give you the opportunity to prove your technical skills using a proven network of trust. So I'm gonna go work on that and I'll see you in the next video.